Among the few native fruits in the United States, cranberry is one of them. Native Americans have long known how to use cranberries not only as food but also as medicine, thanks to its strong anti-inflammatory properties. They even used it to treat arrow wounds. Cranberries are shrubs primarily grown in swampy lands. Currently, the three leading cranberry growing states in the U.S. are Wisconsin, Massachusetts, and New Jersey. According to statistics, up to 81% of cranberries are used to produce juice and sauce. Today, we understand that cranberries are not just an ordinary fruit, but a superfood thanks to their strong antioxidant properties, which help prevent various diseases. Particularly, one-fifth of the U.S. cranberry harvest is consumed in just one day, on Thanksgiving, mainly in the form of sauce. Surprisingly, only 5% of cranberries are sold fresh, with the rest being processed into products like sweet and dried cranberries, juice, and sauces. Contrary to popular belief, cranberries don't grow underwater. So, how are they cultivated? We are in southern New Jersey, one of the top three cranberry producing states in the U.S. In the winter, to protect the crops, since they are perennial plants, we have to safeguard them by freezing or encasing them in ice. Part of the process is covering the fields with a layer of sand, about 1.9 cm thick, every 3 to 4 years. This helps prevent overgrowth and provides fresh nutrients to the berries and vines for the upcoming season. The sand we use is typically sourced from our farm. We dig it out of the ground and store it for use in the spring. When the ice melts, the sand filters down onto the plants, covering the old growth and burying insect pests that live in the soil's duff layer. This also helps keep the field warmer, with the temperature difference of up to 10 degrees between a sanded and an unsanded field on cold nights. When we prepare new fields or renovate old ones, we often use vines from another existing field or purchase them from other farmers.
In the spring, we get the irrigation systems ready. The irrigation system is very important. Sprinklers are placed between the beds, and some farms use drip irrigation to deliver water directly to the roots. What's interesting is that this 2,000-acre farm only uses 130 acres for cultivation, while the rest is used as a water storage and reuse system. Most cranberry growing families here have maintained this work since the 1800s. Cranberries are perennial plants, and some fields are over 65 years old. They thrive in sandy soil and require about 16 months to complete an initial growth cycle. Cranberries require a large amount of water, not just for growth, but also for the harvesting process. The first time is in December, during winter, when the plants are dormant, and water acts as a blanket to insulate the bushes from harsh frost. In June, the fields are drained, and the pink cranberry blossoms start to bloom. Nowadays, many farms use commercial bees to pollinate the crops, and their role is crucial. Without the bees, we farmers wouldn't know what to do. Hiring bees is very expensive, but it acts like an insurance policy to ensure a good harvest. After the blossoms fade, small cranberries begin to form, and we fertilize the plants. By August, the green berries gradually turn white, and finally, in the fall, they turn red. A strange thing about cranberries is that they don't become sweet when they ripen. Unlike strawberries or blueberries, they are naturally tart, whether red or white, and the color is just an outer shell. They are crisp like apples, with four air chambers inside that help them float on water during the harvest. By October, during the harvest season, water is pumped into the fields to make the berries float. Harvesting machines move through the bushes, knocking the berries off the plants. Farmers then corral the floating cranberries into channels, where they are sucked up onto trucks and transported to processing plants.
At the plant, cranberries are turned into products like juice, craisins, and sauce. The cranberry juice production process begins by freezing the berries, which helps break down their cell structure to extract the juice. Remember, cranberries are tart, so many of their byproducts are sweetened. It takes around 4,400 cranberries to make a bottle of juice. The remaining berries, after juicing, are dried to make craisins. Once fully dried, flavorings like strawberry essence can be added to enhance the product's taste. Each year, the U.S. produces around 7.9 million barrels of cranberries, with each barrel weighing approximately 100 pounds. Wisconsin leads the production with 62% of the national output, and production is expected to increase by 10% annually. Each year, the U.S. produces around 7.9 million barrels of cranberries, with each barrel weighing approximately 100 pounds. Wisconsin leads the production with 62% of the national output, and production is expected to increase by 10% annually. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you learned something interesting. Don't forget to share your favorite part in the comments below.